You're listening to WLPN LP Lumpen Radio, 105.5 FM Chicago, broadcasting live at Yolo Cali's Chill Space with La Mesita. Hi, guys. I'm Natalie. And I'm Arlette. And this is Lester Ray. Hey, hi. How y'all doing? Um, we're at Yolo Cali's Chill Space with La Mesita. Can you talk about what Lester Ray is? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Uh, Lester Ray is me, um, an artist, uh, Latin soul, boogaloo, <coughs> hip hop, R and B, Latin, tropical, like a fusion of all of those things. Basically, um, my upbringing here in Chicago as a Puerto Rican. Um, and just uh, the specific stories that I lived through being written down in a notebook and coming out as a song. So Lester Ray is the creation of that. It's actually my real name. So it's like, <coughs> that's why it's like hard to ask or hard to answer because it's like, wait, it's just me. Um, my real name is Ray Lester Irisari. So Lester Ray is just my middle name and first name flipped because it just sounds better. And I don't want people to like have to worry about having to say Irisari. I just want them to hear the songs. So I made the name a little easier. What inspires you to have different hairstyles? <laughs> um, I love these questions. Um, no one's actually asked me that, which is funny because I'm always changing my hairstyle. And you would think somebody would notice. Now, um, I like changing it up. So I'm releasing three EPs this year. So I released Santuario back in March, and um, I'm releasing Epifania at the end of August, August 30th. And then I want to release one more before the year's done. And I wanted each EP to kind of show a different moment in my life. And uh, I felt like the hairstyle was a drastic change um, visually um, for people so that it was a bit more just out there that it's like this is different this is a slightly different luster ray than this next project versus the next project so I'm still thinking about the next hairstyle for the next project <laughs> so we heard that you have a comic book what inspired you to create Hush Poppy so Hush Poppy is like tatted on my knuckles um the name itself came from a Facebook poll where I was like trying to figure out my DJ name so that I could like DJ on the side for fun. It was like Dembo Gorgon, Super Saiyan Rican, or Hush Puppy. And I just came up with all three names. And then there was a poll and Hush Puppy won. So then I went and got tatted on my, <laughs> on my knuckles. Um, and then I wanted the name to mean a little bit more. And I like how it's like Hush. Papi, as a DJ, it's like, it's not when I'm singing. It's not Lester Ray's the singer. Hush Papi is quiet, but he's DJing. And the idea of this um, new person started to be interesting to me. <coughs> At the same time, everything that was going on in Puerto Rico has always been something that's always been interesting to me. And I wrote a song in a mixtape a while back called Coqui, which talks about a world where there are no more Puerto Ricans left. And it talks about a world in the future where they're basically extinct. And there's one Puerto Rican left. And um, I gave him the name Hush Papi because um, he was just holding all the stories of his ancestors. And there's only one comic that's out. So this is more like for future stories that I want to release for that comic. But I felt like it was a cool medium to like reflect more on Puerto Rico and some of the ills that have happened in the past, currently, and what they could look like in the future. And I have this character who's kind of like reminding the future that of the harms that were created and done to the Puerto Ricans. So <clears throat> um, I didn't want to just sing about Puerto Rico all the time because there's such a variety of things I wanted to sing about. So I put the topic of Puerto Rico into a comic book. 
How do you incorporate Latin culture into your music? So speaking about Puerto Rico. <laughs> uh, nah, um, <clears throat> how do I put Latin music into my music? Uh, Latin culture into your music. Latin culture into my music. Um, so Latin culture is, is just interesting to me in general because cause I'm Latino because I'm Puerto Rican. And at the same time, I also feel like I'm a Chicagoan. And what I define as Latino gets gets to be redefined by me, at least in my personal space and in my perspective or in my music. Um, La Cultura does definitely influence me from La Isla, but also what La Cultura has turned into here in the United States. So whether it's reggaeton or Mexican food or fest, f like fiestas in carnaval, like whatever the aspects I see here in the US influence me heavily. Um, I'm drawn to rhythm. I'm drawn to like percussion specifically, and seeing how percussion is played in Mexico, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Brazil, um, all these different areas that have had like strong, like percussive-driven music has definitely influenced my art and my music. Um, but seeing the narratives as they are defined, also um, here in the U.S., also inform my lyrics. Um, so I'm very much tied to the Latino experience here in the U.S., um, sometimes more so than in Latin America, or more so than in Puerto Rico sometimes. But um, there's like a saying that no matter, or at least for Puerto Ricans that I've heard, that no matter where you're at in the world, you're always un Boricua. And a Boricua does change depending on, change their identity depending on where they're at, whether it's New York, Philly, Boston, Florida, Puerto Rico, España, like we're all Boricuas, we just have different um, barrios, I guess. And what is the meaning behind your new song, Amigo, that just dropped? So when I first wrote that song, it was a couple years ago, um, it was straight up a reaction of like wanting to get rid of fake friends and trying to define what were real friends and who really wanted to see me succeed and who was really around me just to see me fail. Um, so when I'm like, no te necesito aquí, it's this idea of getting rid of like negative energy. Um, as I wrote the song throughout the year, met a producer who like took the song to a whole new level, um, added background singers who were from the Bomba community, um, added like a horn player, um, a trombone player. Like as the song kept evolving, I felt like the meaning kept changing to to me. Like it went from a personal like, you know, forget a fake friend to like, um, like it meant something so much more to me once Puerto Rico got rid of their governor. Like even before that, it meant. Like one of the fakest friends has been the U.S. to Puerto Rico, and so like in general, the song became to me in the video in the music video. It was like visually like there's this little kid in the video who represents Puerto Rico, and there's this tío, this Uncle Sam that represents Uncle Sam, and like the kid like sends him off to like El Rio because there's lyrics like Metete en un río, no te necesito aquí. So he's sending like the U.S. away, but then like after the song drops the protests like really pick up in Puerto Rico and like Ricky Rosello gets kicked out of office and I think Puerto Rico just went through like four governors in one week this week um so it started to mean a lot more to me and then even the feature in the song Nino Agustin posted on his Instagram he's like you know I I stand with my brothers he's he's a he's Panamanian so he's like I stand with my Puerto Rican brothers and in the struggle um, you know, forget a fake friend. He's talking about the U.S. again. And he's talking about Ricky Rosello and the governor of Puerto Rico. So it's like people are grabbing the song, too, to make it mean just negative, getting rid of negative energy. So it's, I feel like the meaning has evolved. So on a bit of a lighter note, is there any artist that you wish to collab with either as Hush Poppy or as Lester Ray? 
as Hushpuppy. Hushpuppy is just like DJ for fun. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Lester Ray. Let's see. Like in Chicago or just anyone in the world? Just in general. What? <laughs> That's hard to answer. Um, I love collaborating a lot. So I love working with, I want to work with everyone. Um, let's see. What's like your dream collaboration? Oh man, I don't even know if I have a dream collaboration. Let's see. Dead or alive? <laughs> Dead or alive. Uh, and then if it's if it's dead or alive, it'd be like um, I love to work with Hector Lavo. Um, he's the guy who created salsa, or at least is credited um, as one of the first salsa singers, as one of the premier salseros of the '60s. Um, also, Calle 13, Residente from Calle 13, would be awesome. He's alive. <laughs> um, I want to work with people in the Latino community, um, but I also want to work with like artists in the U.S. that I look up to, like Childish Gambino or like Frank Ocean or um, like Tyler the Creator. Um, so like I want to be that artist that can do that, that can like have a track with Tyler the Creator, and then the next track is Residente from Calle 13. Um, I think that we're in a time in the U.S where Latino artists can finally be that. We've always been like salsero, reggaetonero, this guy does hip hop, this guy does R&B, and it's all separate. And it's like, I feel like we live in a really dope time where we can kind of put all those together. Yeah. Uh, when you're traveling and going on tour, what do you like to do for fun? Dang. I like to go out and just get to know the community, like get to know the people. So like when the shows are done, there's usually an after party of some sort. Like it's not like an official after party, but it's like uh, we're just like where are we gonna go. If the night that we were at goes till three or four in the morning, there's most likely not really an after party, but there's like a food <laughs> that we all go get afterwards. And the more the merrier. I like to get to know like what's popping in Atlanta or what's popping in Orlando or wherever, whatever city we've visited. Like me and uh, Fern, who's also standing off camera, um, we go on tours together. Um, so it's I don't know what what do you like to do on tour? Food, yeah, like food, talking to homies, making new friends. We do go to thrift stores a lot, yeah. I like to see what fashion is looking like or what fashion is being donated back to the stores and stuff like that. I always find something really interesting, especially in Texas. Texas has really, really different clothing than in Chicago. Um, yeah, yeah, food, shopping. <laughs> I like to chill out with homies mostly. So as long as homies are, are there, I think no matter what, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm pretty chill. I'm not like looking for the iconic Atlanta day or the iconic Texas San Antonio day or whatever. Like people coming to Chicago, they want to go see the Bean. I don't necessarily want to go to, I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to necessarily do the tourist things, but I'm down. But as long as we're with homies. So you have a very unique fashion sense, as we can see. It's very cool. Uh, what is your favorite piece that you've copped recently? This shirt. No. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel like I like shopping f for unique pieces. Um, and like a favorite piece, is, it's just hard. It's like when you find a painting um, and you love that painting at that moment and that's the painting that you want. Um, it doesn't necessarily make it better than the last painting you bought and it doesn't necessarily make it the last painting you bought bad um so like it's hard for me to choose a favorite like style just because i feel like my style changes up a lot um i got a cute little pink jacket not too long ago like a like a bomber jacket that's like high waist which is i usually like wear a really long flowy thing sometimes so that's cute <laughs> um Honestly, I changed up my style between 
like more feminine leaning clothing versus more masculine leaning clothing. Um, sometimes it's more colorful. Sometimes it's more earth tones. Um, sometimes I'm wearing a lot of accessories. Sometimes I'm just wearing a little necklace. Yeah. Um, but a favorite piece, maybe the pink jacket right now. I haven't even busted it out yet, but stay tuned. <laughs> So you are very connected with your Puerto Rican culture. As you mentioned, you like to travel, try new food. So what is your favorite dish? Like Puerto Rican dish? Dish in general. Anything you've tried? Man, this, is, this might sound weird, but I really like breakfast tacos from Texas. <laughs> like being on tour, like, wait, are you asking like what's my favorite dish in general in life or just like what I've found in tour? We're Both. What about both? Both? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely breakfast tacos on tour. Like, being in Texas, I've never had tacos that were as good as the ones in Texas. Well, breakfast tacos. Because mm -hmm. tacos here in Chicago are bomb. Um, favorite food in general? Uh, I usually go for lechon, arroz blanco con habichuela, tostones, like una mixta. Uh, like a Puerto Rican dish. Um, yeah, that's probably like my go-to like happy like happy place, like happy happy meal. <laughs> so at Your Locali, we have this debate all the time, and it's necessary that we get your opinion. Do you like pineapple on pizza? <laughs> <laughs> um, pineapple on pizza. Um, I feel like I don't feel strongly about that at all. I don't eat pineapple on pizza. Um, when people order pineapple on pizza at a, at a party, I don't say no. I don't oppose it. I would just take out the pineapples and eat the pizza. Um, but yeah, I'm not one of those like, pineapples don't belong on pizza, or the opposite, um, where it's like, well, you crazy, pineapples go great with pizza. I, I really, I'm just like, I don't like pineapples on pizza. So you're neutral. Yeah, I'm Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Where can the audience find your music? Uh, Lusteray.com has everything, everything. Um, but I'm also on all streaming sites. So if you're on Spotify, iTunes, um, anything like that, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, um, you'll, you'll find my music. Or just Google Lusteray. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. We had an thank amazing you. time with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to WLPN LP, Lumpen Radio, 105.5 FM, Chicago. Stay tuned to La Mesita, where we're going to have Lester Ray perform for us. My name is Lester Ray. This is Pena. Dale. Lo podemos subir un poquito. Para yo poder bailar y sentirlo. Hey, yo got it, yo got it.
canción del C dale vamos a cantar una canción que se llama Santuario Separa más bello 
Regreso a el dolor Regreso a lo que conozco Regreso a el fondo Como la flor, como la flor Gracias, gracias. Ah, amigo, se toca las congas. You enjoying the show? You having a good time? This is Saturday in the summer, it's a good time. Dale. Yo necesito amigo que me diga cómo hacer lo mío. 
Check, check, última canción del día. Se llama Ni Santa. Es un music video, hablan de son también. Check it. That's it. Searching for your beauty. Searching for a blessing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Buscando una santa. Pero caí en su trampa. Le yo una diabla. Con intenciones bien claras. Buscando una santa, pero caí en su trampa. Me yo con una diabla, con intenciones bien claras. Baila mami, baila, baila mami, no importa la religión. Estoy debajo de tu control, estoy debajo de tu control. Baila mami, baila, baila mami, no importa la religión. Estoy debajo de tu control, estoy debajo de tu control. Baila mami, baila, baila mami 
No importa la religión, estoy debajo de tu control. Estoy debajo de tu control. Marafaca de los de los marafacas. Gracias.